across sports talk. This is going to be another NFL edition. And in this NFL edition, we are talking about, I don't want to say tanking per se, but now we're approaching like the halfway point in the NFL season. And now we're getting to see what teams are good and what teams are bad as if we already didn't know. The only team that is still winless is the New York Jets, and they're going to have a really good chance of going 0-16. If you know that your team is completely out of it now, and I know that my Giants are out of it, I've known before the season even started, and then once Saquon got hurt, I knew that it was going to be even worse for us. We've got teams like the Atlanta Falcons, the Minnesota Vikings. You know, let's just kind of rattle through the list, and I'm going to pick up my phone so that I can do so. If the league year ended right now, the New York Jets would have the number one pick, followed by the Los Angeles Chargers, then the Philadelphia Eagles, then the Cincinnati Bengals, then my New York Giants, then the Washington football team, then the Houston Texans, then the Jacksonville Jaguars, then the Atlanta Falcons, and then the Minnesota Vikings, and then we start going into the two win teams. So as of right there, there's two, four, six, eight, ten teams with one win or fewer. Now, if you're a fan of any one of those teams that I just listed, with the exception of the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Chargers, because both of those teams just drafted quarterbacks, they're not going to, in theory, take quarterbacks. Joe Burrow has looked good. Justin Herbert has looked good. If you're the Jets, and now you have the opportunity to draft Trevor Lawrence, who's going to be the number one pick regardless, do you take him? Now, I say that the Jets probably are going to take him, and that's the reason why they've been starting Joe Flacco instead of starting Sam Donald. I also think that they're going to try to trade Sam Donald, and I don't think they want him going out there behind that atrocious offensive line and looking even worse and then having his draft stock just plummet for what they can possibly get from him. They're not going to get very much. They'll probably get a three. Granted, yes, he was a top five pick, but Adam Gase is not the answer. And hopefully for Jets fans, he gets fired sometime soon so that this way the next person in place will actually know how to develop quarterback talent. As I said, I'm a New York Giants fan, and I haven't been very high on Daniel Jones. I've said this from the beginning. I think that he's a tad bit overrated. I think that our offensive line sucks, which that doesn't help his case. But I've seen him make a lot of very foolish mistakes that you don't see some of these other second-year quarterbacks making. It also goes to my thought of what happens if the Jets actually do find a way to win a game. And now all of these teams have one win like the Jets do. Now, I'm in the rare minority where I say that I don't want the Giants to win any more games. I understand being a fan, you want your teams to win. I want them to lose. I want them to lose. I want them to get obliterated only because it's going to help us build our team for the future. Saquon's going to be back next year. We won't be as bad next year. And if we could somehow get the number one pick, now we have something to think about. Do we draft Trevor Lawrence or do we take the abundance of picks that someone is going to give up? to try to get Trevor Lawrence. That's the catch-22. Now, if you're also a team like the Atlanta Falcons, Matt Ryan has glimpses of greatness and glimpses of MVP-ness, and then he has glimpses of, I don't know what the hell just happened. Now, he has been a consistent quarterback. He plays much better in the dome than he does on the road, and luckily for him, his division has two dome teams. Hooray for him. But now, if you're a team like the Falcons, or even a team like the Minnesota Vikings, you want to keep winning. What is the purpose of going 6-10 and 10 when you could go 2-14 and 14 and more likely than not try to secure your chance at taking one of these top five prospects? And now, this isn't me saying this in a year where the quarterback class is supposed to be weak. Everyone has been talking about Trevor Lawrence since Trevor Lawrence was a freshman. That they were saying that he was supposed to be the next Andrew Luck and the next um, John Elway. He's supposed to be the next Peyton Manning. This is supposed to be the next generational dude. They're not talking about a dude after him. They're talking about him. So if this is the dude who just continues to keep winning in college, continues to be the consensus number one pick. If you're an NFL team, I know you're not supposed to tank, but inside, behind closed doors, you're telling your team or you're telling your GM or your coach, we need this guy, we need to keep losing. That's just my take. I hope that the Giants keep losing. I really hope that we're in a position to draft Trevor Lawrence. Ultimately, I think he's going to end up going to the Jets. 
And if that's the case, he may end up just staying at Clemson and try to win another national championship. Let me know what you think of my take in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram at Raw Sports Talk. Follow me on Twitter at Raw Sports Talk 1. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. I'm out. Ooh, baby, I like it, bro. Yeah, baby, I like it.